Dear ladies and gentlemen, welcome to already our seventh season of Chemco TV's news bulletins. With CCTV, we can share news and information from Chemcon Europe 2018 in Budapest with you. Also in this series of CCTV news bulletins, you can expect interviews with authority and industry experts, today the potential impact and consequences of selling chemicals on the internet, as of tomorrow, sound bites from the sessions, every day a statement of the day and a forecast for the day, and also in Budapest we have a local reporter with informative stories. This season our local reporter is Mr. Tibor Meskal, Senior Duty Manager at the characteristic and charming Corinthia Hotel Budapest, the location of Chemcon Europe 2018. Tibor, it's an honor to have you with us this week. Thank you, Chaird. Welcome to Budapest and to the Corinthia. Established in 1896 as Grand Hotel Royal Budapest, one of the most beautiful buildings of the city. Looking forward to showing you around in the hotel and also the city of Budapest. Let's start with the board. Tiber's footprints are all over the hotel. As an 18-year-old apprentice, he started his career at the Grand Hotel Royal in 1961, when the hotel finally reopened after the destruction during both the Second World War and the 1956 Hungarian Uprising. After five years, he left the Royal to work around the globe until he returned in 2003 to the Royal for another reopening after a huge renovation. In 2000, only the hotel front and the ballroom were left. And what kind of ballroom? Already since 1896, the place to go in Budapest. Yes, indeed. Within no time, the Royal became a place to the elite of Pest to meet. They would meet here for the afternoon tea before watching motion pictures. On May the 10th, 1896, only 10 days after the opening of the hotel, the Lumiere brothers already staged their motion pictures at the hotel. In 1915, the Royal Ballroom was completely transformed into a cinema, the Apollo Cinema, later renamed to the Verschillag or Red Star Cinema. Thank you for now, Tibor. Let's talk about this chapter of the Royal and Hungarian history later in this bulletin. Now we will shift our focus to the current modern era where people with one click can purchase almost anything via the internet. Please watch the highlights of the interview I had with Gro Hagen about selling chemicals on the internet. The doorbell rings. Surprise! It's the postman with a package for you. But what is in it? There are so many online shops. With one click you can literally order anything for someone else or for yourself. Many of the big online retailers like AliExpress and Amazon, they offer a platform for very many different sellers of things. Among them, chemical products. The chemicals are uh, quite often provided to third-party resellers by um, big chemical companies with the right labeling, COP, JTS, uh, REACH, all compliant. But then they are repackaged or they're used in potentially dangerous products by those third parties without the right labeling and then shipped to unaware customers. What are your thoughts about that? I can understand it's very challenging for the e-commercial companies to, um, um, to, with regards to this question, but uh, I think it's very important to know who is responsible for placing this uh, chemical on the market. And in, um, in the REACH and the CLP legislations, it's the distributor or the um, um, importer of the chemical that is responsible for labeling and packaging the, the chemical on the right way, in the right way. E-commerce uh, platforms need to have good uh, internal control, as we say, like routines that they check and monitor how the chemicals are um, uh, labeled and packaged. The complete interview can be viewed at our website and YouTube channel, or just press the CCTV button in our ChemConnect app, which brings me to the statement of the day. Also in Budapest, we use our ChemConnect app that allows us to share news and allows you to engage in interactive polls and you can use it for coming together. We just discussed the purchasing of chemicals on the internet and things that might go wrong. Today's statement is closely linked to this. Sometimes it might be needed to call the local poison center. Something I will discuss with Ronald de Groot of the Dutch Poison Information Center. Ronald, welcome. Thank you, Chair. 
Ronald, can you explain a little bit about the role of the Dutch Poison Center? Well, the main task of our center is to provide physicians and other healthcare professionals with information on the possible health effects and also the treatment options after acute intoxications. And our center um, every year receives around 48,000 information requests. And in 14,000 cases, this will concern household products, uh, cosmetics, pesticides, um, biocides, and also industrial products. And to make an adequate risk assessment and also to decide if hospital admission is necessary and to, to give advice about treatment, is, it is very important that we have product information available. Um, also voluntarily notified for non-classified uh, mixtures. And your statement is? Companies should voluntarily notify detailed information on all mixtures they place on the market. Thank you for your statement. As promised, we return now to Tibor to learn more on the red chapter of Hungary, communism. Hi Tibor, where are you? I am in Memento Park. Being here takes us back in time for the communist regime behind the Iron Curtains, where all the statues exhibited in here came from. Pulled down when I was a 14-year-old young boy, and it's giving me uh, memories of that time. The name of the statue actually, Captain Ostapenko. In that certain period of time, I also witnessed Stalin boots, Red Army soldiers, and uh, anything which was going with the regime politically uncomfortable. After the devastating World War II, Hungary was liberated by the Soviet Red Army on April the 4th, 1945. But soon after, became heavily under the influence of the Soviet Union. Leading to the Hungarian People's Republic in 1949, a de facto Soviet satellite. On the 23rd of October of 1956, a peaceful demonstration of students in Budapest started the Hungarian Revolution, demanding the end to the Soviet occupation. Also in this uh, red chapter of Hungarian history, the Grand Hotel Roya played her role. On the morning of November 4, 1956, 1,000 Soviet tanks opened the fire on the hotel. After five hours of solid fire, all occupants of the Roya were dead. But it was not until the 23rd of October in 1989 that Hungary became a democratic parliamentary republic. The time when Michael Gorbachev developed his reform of the Soviet Union with perestroika and glasnost. Let's never forget the Hungarian freedom fighters. Impressive. A mural close to the hotel shows the front of the Time magazine in 1956. The magazine regarded the freedom fighters in the Hungarian Revolution as heroes and dedicated their prestigious cover to all of the brave souls that fought in the struggle for freedom. I'm sure that the freedom fighters would have been pleased with the way Budapest has developed into a colorful city where many murals color public spaces which is an initiative of the colorful city that brings art to streets and public spaces for people to enjoy. This week we show you several magnificent murals from both the Colorful City Association as well as from the NeoPaint Works Group. NeoPaint painted the Time Mural and this very special one is from the Colorful City. With an app you can even change the weather in this mural. Now it's really time for the forecast. Before the welcome reception, a lot of interesting presentations. This morning we will start with a workshop on enforcement. After that we will talk about supply chain communication and SDS, followed by a deep dive into the Poison Center notification requirements. Thank you for watching and looking forward to seeing you at tonight's welcome reception.